this evening, we want to just look at the subject of, of the new life, that if we are in Christ, we have turned over a new leaf, and we, we have indeed a new life. Now, simple thoughts uh, here again, as, as many times as I come before you, uh, I'm not bringing you anything, anything new. In fact, you know, there's, uh, as I, I heard uh, at a gospel meeting this last week, uh, I believe it was Brother Ron Griffin over at Brown Street that said, you know, that, that, there's, that there's nothing new that, you know, we, we preachers, we kind of copy our lessons because uh, we have the scriptures. We're all working from the same book. So uh, there's not like copyright laws on lessons and so on. Uh, so these are things that we hear and have heard many times before in the past, this idea of this new life. And it's, it's important that we keep reminding ourselves of that, that we are willing and able to tell those that may not have taken that step uh, in Christ, to tell them what, what they're missing out on as well. But for, for us, most especially, you know, individually, each, each day of our lives, we, as we look inwardly, to ourselves, we want to uh, take advantage of this new life that we have in Christ, and and it should be, it should be new. It should be that old things have passed away. Let's look in First Peter, uh, chapter four. We're going to read the first six verses. Uh, I, I restrained myself uh, in putting that up there because I wanted to go further, but I think I think we'll stop at verse six. 1 Peter 4, the first six verses, as we read, it says, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lusts, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to to men in the flesh. Let's start that one over. Verse 6. For this reason the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but, get, but live according to God in the Spirit. So as we look there, this new life, it embodies, uh, embodiment of that new life is that we no longer live the rest of, of the time in our flesh with, you know, according to the lusts that, that we formerly chased after. You know, it's, it's very easy to, to fall back into the comfort zone of where your life's been. You know, it's, it's hard to imagine some of the things we see in the world today being a comfort zone for some, but, but you know, alcohol, drugs, uh, ungodly relationships, uh, some of the abominable things that are spoken of here, uh, they can be a place of comfort. Uh, if we have lived a long time in those things, sometimes when it becomes a little bit stressful to seek after godly things, sometimes we, we may feel that, well, I could just go back and, and take some comfort in those old ways just a little while. But we need to resist that. We need to lean upon each other that we, that we continue in this new life in Christ. You know, it's, it's a new world that we open up when we, when we take this step into Christ. Let's go just a, a, little, bit, a little bit further back. 1 Peter 3, verses 20 and 21 reads, well, let, let's go back up a little bit in verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, 
being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, we, we, we live in this, in this new world, the, the, the world that we see around us, the, the, the world that, that we uh, see around us is going to change because we do different things. And we also have a new world to look forward to. We have a place prepared for us by Christ. If we go back over to the book of John, just for a moment here, John chapter 14. Let's go over there to John chapter 14. And the first three verses of John chapter 14. Comforting words that no doubt are familiar to us. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What comforting, what a comforting thought, what comforting words that we have that place prepared for us. This, this new world, this new life that we, that we live in Christ. We have that hope of heaven after this life. When we look around us and we see all of the, the, the degradation going on around us and we see all of the things that happen in the world when we turn on the news and see that there are, again, people seeking to slaughter one another, people seeking to do harm to one another, Whatever, whatever our lot, perhaps, perhaps there be people seeking to do harm to us uh, at, at some point in the future. But we have a place prepared by Christ. It helps us to be able to look forward to that, to look, look to that and to understand just how fleeting this life is, just how meaningless all of the things that we hold most dear in our physical lives, just how meaningless they are. You know, all of the shiny things, the things that we wake up for every day, the things that get you out of bed to go to work, to go to your job, uh, your, your home, your savings account, the objects that you have uh, in, in this physical life, uh, they pale in comparison to that new life in Christ. They pale in comparison to <clears throat> the place prepared by Christ. <clears throat> it truly is a new life and a new world that we can look forward to, one that isn't subject to all of the awful things that we see around us in, in this life. We also, as, this, as we have this new life in Christ, have a new mind. If we go forward to the book of Romans, chapter 15, and uh, <clears throat> you probably know where I'm going, but uh, Romans chapter 15, starting at verse 5, says, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus that you may, with one mind and one mouth, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we need to have this new mind. And, and, and how is it that we get this new mind? We get that new mind by studying the scriptures. But when we are in Christ, we understand that uh, we are to be acting according to him. A lot of times we hear these words as we, we, we look at this like-mindedness, uh, to be alike. Uh, a lot of times people will take that to mean that we should just always agree, 
That we're going to just be agreeable to one another and, and we seek to fit in with one another. And that's a recipe for disaster. Look around us in the world. What happens when we forsake the truth? What happens when we don't have our minds grounded in Christ and his word? The church starts to go astray. We see that it happened very quickly, uh, you know, after, after the church was established in the first century. It wasn't too long before, uh, before there started to be letters written that I hear that these things are going on among you. Uh, because, again, uh, our, the human minds of, of, of the brethren back then were, were drifting. And we're no different uh, today. A lot of our, our minds will drift as well. Think back to, again, think back to Israel and how quickly their minds drifted from the Lord. And they had tangible proof in front of them. They had the Lord walking with them. Uh, they had many signs and wonders given to them that they, might be, that they might believe. And yet they still wandered very quickly. But we have this new life in Christ. We have this new mind if we put our minds to the word and put the word in our hearts. Then we start to act like Christ would have us to act. As time goes on and we study and we, we, we gain new knowledge of, of Christ and his ways, we start to make decisions that are based upon that truth that we have in Christ. And before long, we start to notice that we make some of the same decisions. You know, I think it's a wonderful thing that as, as we travel, I mention, I've mentioned this many times, as you travel across this world and across this country and you seek out the brethren. You seek out the, the Christians that are meeting wherever you are. Uh, you have all of these things in common. I find it remarkable that I can walk into a building and be among a group of people that I've never met before and yet have so much in common with them and feel such a, a, a closeness to them because we're working for the same things. You'll find the same, the same sorts of language coming out of our mouths, and you'll find the same sorts of desires and hopes uh, for one another. It's a wonderful thing, this new mind, this mind of Christ. It's the same because we're all following Christ. If we look to 1 Corinthians, uh, we look a little bit deeper into this idea of the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2 Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and at verse 16. And we read, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. What a wonderful promise that we have, that we have the mind of Christ in the pages of our Bible. We have the word that is able to save our souls, to change the way that we think. And that's exactly what we need to allow to happen in our lives, that we allow it to change the way that we think. As you sit here, you know, don't raise your hand, but among us, you know, think about it. Uh, do you think differently than you did before you were a Christian? Is there, is there something different about your life? Do you see this new life in Christ? Or uh, do you feel like it's the same old, same old? Uh, if, you, if it's the latter, then I, I encourage you to do some more digging and reading in the Bible to get together with Christians all the more, to be together with them. I mean, as we gather here this evening, uh, you know, we, we're here to build each other up, not just to hear me talk. Uh, we, of course, want to hear a bit more of the Word of God, but... But, but one of the things that happens when we come together like this is that we, we, build, we, we build a rapport with one another. We become closer as a family. And we should want to be together. And we should, want, we, we should encourage our brother. And if you look around us, our number is a lot less than it was here this morning. We need to encourage our brother and to be with us. Encourage our brother and that, that uh, perhaps... 
uh, don't realize just how important this time is. And I, and I, and I know, and I, I t- truly understand the, uh, the, that life happens and jobs take place. And I understand that, that uh, there are some that are working now or even preparing to work uh, yet this evening. But we really need to think very seriously about this new life in Christ. We need to make sure that we're not filling this new life in Christ with a bunch of old things and expecting to get new results out of it. This new mind in Christ, this new life in Christ that we, that we have, that we have the opportunity to take hold of, uh, can change so much. It can help us to be more secure in our minds, so more secure in, in the way that we act and the things that we do. The uh, people around us will even notice that, that you know, it, it takes a little bit to shake you up. Well, why are you so calm? How can you be so calm with all these things going on around you? You know, just yesterday, uh, Angela and I went to a meeting uh, it was more, more. It was a basically a political action group. Our, our neighbor asked us to go, and and I have quite a bit of uh, common thoughts with the people in this political group. But as I was sitting there thinking about the things that they were saying, and I'm thinking, you know, a lot of this will preach because they were talking about making sure that we let our neighbors know what is going on, let our neighbors know about you know, what the actual truth is and, and make sure that you show the lies to be what they are, the lies that you might see out there in the world being told to you. And I'm thinking, well, boy, all these problems that you're talking about would be fixed if people would just seek after the Lord. All of these things, you know, it, 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 we want to put Band-Aids on things and we see things happening around us and we want to put a Band-Aid on that and deal with, deal with the worldly thing in a worldly way. But if we handle the spiritual matters in our lives, if we go for this new mind in Christ, all of those physical things that men do to each other, uh, mankind does to each other, then those things will fix themselves or they'll, they'll be fixed because men won't have a mind to do those same things again. You know, this, this new way of life that we're talking about, if we go back over to the book of Galatians. We're going to go to Galatians chapter 2, and at verse 20. Galatians 2 at verse 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This new life is lived toward Christ. You know, if you look in the book of Jeremiah, I've got it up there on the screen for you if you can read it. Now, Jeremiah 10, starting at verse 23, says, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. O Lord, correct me, but with justice. Not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. With that in mind, do you realize what we have in front of us in the scriptures? God had every, every right to snuff out life as we know it uh, because of the anger that he has, has towards, uh, towards mankind that he could have certainly uh, directed in our, in our way. He could have snuffed us out. But uh, thinking back to uh, when he destroyed the earth in the flood, but he, he, he saved that that righteous remnant of people to carry on his ways. And, and, and over and over again, he has given us time and time again a chance. 
And he still gives us this chance. And he still gives us his justice in his, in his word. He still gives us the way to direct our steps, not by our own thoughts and our own will and desire, but with his word. This is the patience of the Lord uh, here in front of us. This is him allowing us this final chance as we have breath in our bodies to come to his way of life, to his way of thinking, if you will, to, to have this mind that he has. So our, again, we ask the question, are you living this new life in Christ? Is this something that, that uh, you can look at your own life and say, yes, uh, I am living this, this new life? I hope it is, and I, uh, I hope it is that, that I'm telling you something that you already know, and I hope that you get in your cars this evening and on your way home say, boy, I've heard all that before. He didn't really have anything new to say. I hope that's what you say. Because uh, I, I want each and every one of us to be of this mindset. I hope each and every one of us is that we understand this new life that we have in Christ that uh, this new mind that we have is going to clash with the world, that they're going to think that we're weird. You might lose some friendships over it, because not because we will put those people away and say, get away from me, but because we don't do the same things anymore. And if their minds are unwilling to change, if they're unwilling to adhere to the word of God, then it's just naturally going to happen that we're going to go in different directions. It's painfully happened in my life. I have uh, friends that were very, very close in times past. And it's not that I'm angry with them or that they're angry with me. It's just that we live a different life. It's just that we, we do different things and we have different purposes in mind. And I very much wish that they would have the same purpose again with, that I do. I, I wish that they would have the same purpose as Christ so that we could share in that once again and be together uh, in our lives. But uh, unfortunately, as we know, sometimes that doesn't happen. But even, even if that is the case, even if we lose some friendships, relationships in this world over this new life in Christ, it's worth it. We need to realize the value of this new life in Christ and take comfort in that relationship, the relationship that we have because we know who he is, because knowing who he is, we are willing to confess him and willing to follow him and be obedient to him and follow after him and make sure that our path still leads to this everlasting life with him. That every day of our lives we aim our footsteps in such a way that we are continuing to seek after that crown of life. If we are faithful until death, we realize that, that the Lord promises that we will have that crown of life. So as we close off this short lesson here this evening, are you living this new life? If you're not, would you like to? If there be anybody that needs to put on Christ in baptism, the waters are ready behind me. If these things that we've talked about here this evening seem interesting and you'd like to learn more about it, we would love to study with you. We would love to share this hope that we have in Christ. And, and it's not of our own making. It is simply following after Christ. If you uh, need the prayers of the saints or you need to put on Christ in baptism, please come forward as we stand and sing.